When the film was first muted, it was uh, very difficult. We brought Alan Parker in, uh, and he didn't really want to direct it. He wanted to produce it. And he suggested, and Roger suggested, that I direct it with my visual uh, sense, and that my, Alan Parker's cameraman, Michael Saracen, should be the technical side. He should interpret my visions. Um, and we were, in fact, for, I suppose, a period of months, uh, co-directors. Uh, Alan Parker went to Hollywood with a book that I had produced called The Black Book, which had images of what the film would like, and he tried to sell it over there to America. Um, and he says there's nothing quite so lonely as sitting in the Los Angeles room waiting for the phone to, cook, to ring. And it didn't, and he didn't get a deal. Uh, so when he came back, um, it, it seemed that we weren't going to get a deal with me being and Michael Saracen being directors. So Alan was persuaded to take over with his, with his sort of background of Midnight Express and Bugsy Malone and all that. He was able to get the money. Uh, and so, yeah, I was director for a short period of time. and I, I, I interviewed lots of possible people for, uh, for, for parts in it and so on. I did quite a lot of work. But even after the film had started and Alan was directing, I was still kind of designing the scene or scenes, the more surreal scenes in particular, where it's sort of uh, the kids going through the maze and the kids on the conveyor belt and the kids being pushed into the mincer are all drawings of mine, which you can see in the book. And the, you can see how faithfully Alan Parker has realized my, 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 my designs. He's made them come to life. There are pictures uh, of the conveyor belt and then you'll see the, the, the drawing, uh, the, um, you'll see the resulting bit of film and it's, it's identical. So he really did try. Alan said to me rather flatteringly that the, way, the reason he took on this film is because when he saw when he went to the concert and he saw the flowers, the flowers again, he thought, I want to do a film with those in. He was blown away, he said, by, by this. He was very flattering to me in, in that way. And he always said to me, you know, you don't know what you do when you touch a pencil. You don't know what you're doing. It comes out different. It looks different. And that's what I want this film to look like. And I think he really did try to do with a camera what, what, I, what I did with my designs. And I did many, many designs for the film. There was one called The Alien Landscape with Bob sitting out in this sort of landscape, of desolate landscape with, with you know, barbed wire. And he's going crazy in this hotel room. And we kind of mix through to the, in what's happening in his mind. And he's out on a desolate landscape, which I made a drawing of. And this was called The Alien Landscape. And uh, it always amused me afterwards because when it became a set at Pinewood, they sort of talk about it as though it was a, where's Ted then? Oh, he's gone up the bleeding alien landscape by this last time I saw him. So these sketches of mine suddenly became real locations, which is very strange. And also, I mean, it was quite frightening sometimes to, to see a, a, a scribble or a drawing of, I'd done of, of something or other. It's suddenly a 100,000 pound set at Pinewood. And people think, oh, did I really mean that? Or, uh, so it, it's, it's a wonderful world. And as Orson Welles said, you know, making films is the best train set in the world. And it really is. And especially at that level, at the MGM Hollywood level. Uh, you had a fantastic time, really. And, and apart from the th the, what Alan called the three megalomaniacs in a room issue, I mean, we were, each of us, Roger, me and Alan used to getting our own ways in our own world and, and being director. And naturally when Alan came along, he wanted to be director. That was the title he was given and he expected to take the thing and do it his way. Roger and I who had, in, um, and Roger and I who had invested, you know, three years of our life in, on, on this wall thing, we're not gonna let that happen. We weren't gonna let it be taken away. I still wanted control, and Rogers definitely wanted control. It was his story. So it was very fraught, very fraught. And I think a lot of the angst that happened during that period probably came out in the film. Maybe it was that, you know, it's a, it's a film that shows that back, uh, backstage stabbings. <laughs> um, it's fine now. Alan Kane was sat, in fact, where you are, and he's, he's written for the book. He's, he's a, we went through the book with me. 
And we both laughed at those days where things seemed so awful and so terrible. He doesn't, thank God, with the passage of time, things don't matter so much.